inspiration from biblical teachings. And of course, I want to also focus on the example set by Jesus concerning consistency. All right. So I want you guys to just follow me on this journey. And um, I want you to really pay attention to this. If you're watching this right now live or you're watching the rebroadcast, this, I believe, is the answer, one of the answers that we that we are looking for and need if we're going to accomplish the purpose and the plan that God has for us. So number one, I want to speak about the harm the, the hallmark of success. Consistency is not just a virtue. It's the hallmark of success in any industry. Great ideas are the foundation, of course, but it's the unwavering commitment to consistency or constant effort that turns dreams or God's purpose into reality. So Proverbs 24 is our scripture that I want us to remember. Proverbs 24, verse 27. I'm going to be quoting from the NIV. It says, put your outdoor work in order and get your fields ready. After that, build your house. This is so important. If we're going to be consistent, we are going to have to have a plan in place. I've seen it so much that people, good, well-meaning people, have desires, have revealed purpose and revelation on what the Lord wants them to do. But because the, the prerequisite of planning wasn't implemented, consistency became almost impossible. A plan safeguards us to be consistent over a long period of time. It takes a long period of time. It takes compound interest and a long-term investment for us to see the desired results that, that we want to see in any venture that we're in. So if we're going to be consistent, number one, we have to have a plan in place. A plan is very, very important. I know plans can change. You might say to yourself, well, I don't know how to plan. I don't know what to put in place, but start somewhere. You have to start from, from zero and attempt to walk through this planning stage. A lot of our energy going in 2024 should, should, should go into the initial planning, pla planning stage of what we want to do so that we can accomplish the task that God has put in our hands and in the assignments. So the hallmark of success is, co is consistency. But again, it's more than just a virtue. We have to plan, all right? G ideas are good, but planning is essential for us to be successful and to be consistent. Number two is just as important because we are good at starting, but not so good at finishing. Many of us excel in, at starting new ventures, but the key lies in seeing them through completion. The journey from initiation to the fruition demands a consistent and persistent effort. If we're going to finish what we start, we have to be consistent and persistent. We see this in Luke 14, verse 20, 28. Um, Luke, Luke 14, verse 28 says, Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost, that's a plan, to see if you have enough money to complete it? After planning, the planning or the, the plan itself lets us know how much power, how much strength, how much, um, you know, how much energy we can actually put into this venture. It gives us um, a clear vision to say, okay, I have the plan in, in place. I know where I'm headed. Do I have enough right now to get where I want to go? And when you see a deficit or if you see that you have enough, now you can implement consistency and persistence. Persistence is going to be needed because there will be roadblocks and trials and, 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 and things that will always come up. Excuses are, 
one in a million, right? So they, they're always there. But you can see what excuses can arise, what things, what challenges can arise on the journey to fulfilling the purpose that God has placed in your hands. So the plan is there, but now we're going to see if we have enough to finish. If we don't, then we're going to ask God to give us the necessary resources that we need to finish. And if we do, then we're going to go forward and, and make a conscious effort to be consistent and to be persistent in what we are doing. This may sound like a motivational type of message or a, a motivational speak, um, speech from a pastor, but it's not. This is what the Lord has placed on my heart for myself and for the church. This is what we have to do. We have to be consistent, people of God. We have to be persistent in what God has placed in our hands. When we do this, we will see the results. We will see the fruit of the, the vision that God has placed in us. This is so important. My question to you today, whenever you're watching this broadcast, will you make a commitment to be consistent? Will you say, all right, I have these plans in place. I have this vision. I'm going to be consistent. This is the year where I don't start something and not finish. This is the year. This is the time where I now I'm putting my hand to the plow and I'm not going to stop plowing, stop digging, stop investigating and stop hoping until I see what I hope for manifest in my hands. Come on, somebody. This is what we are going to do. And this is what we have to do. Jesus Christ, he is the ep epitome of consistency. The life of Jesus provides an ultimate example of consistency from the beginning of his ministry to the ultimate sacrifice on the cross. Jesus showed us what it means to stay steadfast in the challenges that we will face or in the face of challenges. Jesus showed us that he was consistent. He was persistent and he was able to accomplish the greatest feat that any man has accomplished on this planet. And that's the salvation of souls. Isn't that wonderful? So what I'm talking about again is not a philo philosophical, motivational idea or speech that I'm giving. I am telling you the word of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 says this, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. He knew what the price was. He knew his, his goal, think about this, his vision was souls. His goal, his, 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 his desire, his assignment was the souls, the salvation of his creation, of his, of his people. He considered the cost. The cost was the cross. He saw that he had the ability to do it. So what did he do? In the fullness of time, he came in the flesh. Come on. And he walked through his ministry. There were, there were trials. There were challenges. But he considered the cost before. But he was consistent. I want to say this also. He was consistent and he wasn't distracted. Remember, there, there was a time in Jesus' ministry, John the Baptist died, who was a forerunner. He died at the hands of Herod. And Herod, the Bible says, he used to listen to John the Baptist preach, right? He was a person that was in audience when John the Baptist would declare, repent for the kingdom of God at hand. And John the Baptist baptized people um, into the baptism of repentance, right? And Herod was there. And we see in scripture that, that he, he was intrigued by John the Baptist. And he, you know, and, and he, he was there and he was attentive. But John the Baptist began to rebuke him because Herod was um, having relations with his brother's wife, right? So John the Baptist, who was a prophet, began to really, you know, give it to Herod. 
Eventually, Herod had him killed, right? We know the story. If you don't know it, read it in the Gospels. But Herod has something in him that he, he wanted to hear the word of God, but he wouldn't respond to it, but he wanted to hear it. So when Jesus now was becoming popular and, and Jesus was doing what he was doing, preaching the gospel, um, Herod sent messengers to tell Jesus to come. What he, what, what he was essentially doing was becoming a distraction. So when the messengers came to Jesus, who was consistent and who was persistent, because he had a plan and he considered the costs and he was going forward. When the messengers came and offered Jesus an invitation to speak to Herod, who was a political um, idol or figure in that time, Jesus did not yield that distraction because he knew what he had to do. So when that time came, see, many of us in that moment, we probably would have stopped what we were doing, turned our eyes away from the mission towards Herod, because again, Herod was a political figure. So we will say to ourselves, well, I guess it makes sense for us to go speak to Herod because he's a man in power and we can maybe influence him to, you know, hear the gospel. And, but Jesus understood that this was a distraction. What I'm trying to say is that even good invitations that we may deem to be good can be a distraction to you in 2024. If it's not in line with what God has put in your heart, if it's not, um, if it's not pushing forward what your vision, or what God gave you, turn it down. There were times in the past when, when I set myself and I set my face to just do what God called me to do. And I will get calls and invitations and opportunities from good people, from good people. And, and, and um, I took them. But after going through that opportunity, I realized after the fact that this was a distraction. And every time I, I, I set myself to do something, I'm doing it. I've noticed that my, my me personally, my distractions weren't necessarily sinful or bad there are actually good things but good things at the wrong time people of god is a distraction so as we go forth we have to follow the example of jesus we have to know the plan put our hands to the plow go forward and not let good things become a distraction and not let um even you know Maybe pleasurable things become a distraction. Again, Hebrews 12, 2 says, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the example, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, or of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, and, and now I'm, I'm going further, scorning its shame, and we know he sat down at the right hand of God, meaning the power, power, all power was given to him. If we want to walk in the power of the anointing, the power of Jesus Christ, we have to set our eyes upon him, meaning not only him, but what he has told us to do, his instructions, and we will walk in power and we will accomplish the plan that God has set before us. And lastly, what we see here now, according to for, for consistency, is biblical Wisdom on consistency. The Bible is um, replete with wisdom on the importance of consistency. So let's reflect on some verses that guide us in our journey of consistency. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says, Let us not become weary in well-doing. Let's be consistent. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. That is a powerful scripture. This deals with plant harvest, right? Planting seed and seeing the um, manifestation, the, the, the harvesting of the seeds that we planted. We have to recognize what season that we're in now. Are we in a planting season or are we in a reaping season? Both seasons um, demands consistency. Planting, watering, and reaping, they all, they all demand consistency. And my question to you, 
right now is what season are you in? Are you planting? Are you starting something new? If you're starting something new and you're planting, then you have to understand that you're not going to see a lot of results right now. Put it in your mind now. If you're if you're going into next year, 2024, with a new business plan, a new ministry, new family, whatever it may be, this is your new thing and you're moving in. You're in the planting season. So don't get discouraged if you don't see the manifestation or a lot of results. I remember when we planted Remnant Church here in Boynton Beach. You got to watch out who you speak to. People will ask me, well, how much people do you have? All, all these questions, right? When you give them the answer, you know, we have a few people, they look at you like, or they give you a, uh, like, you're not doing anything. Those Don't worry about people like that. People like that don't understand seasons. And people like that are distractions. People like that can discourage you from the, the thing that God has placed in your hands because you can take their response to your planting season as failure. And it's not failure. And that's why we have to be consistent. We have to understand I'm consistent and I'm persistent because I have a plan and I know where God is taking me and I know what God has shown me. It is set before me. So I'm going to endure. You're in a planting season. Maybe you're in a watering season. In the planting season and in the watering season, you don't see too much results because you have to water. But when you're watering now, you one day you might see some, some buds spring up out the ground, right? What you couldn't see before, what was hidden under the surface in planting season is now coming up, out up the surface. You're seeing results, little results. But don't get discouraged when you see small things. Don't despise the days of small things because it's a sign that there is life. So when you're working this thing next year and now you're beginning to see little results, don't consider little results as the mundane. Let's not be deceived. This is not a mundane thing. What God has put in your hand is precious. And he's calling us to be good stewards of what he has placed in our hands. So when you see these buds coming up, that's life. Don't allow the voices of Herod and, and the voice of the Pharisees to tell you that, that the little results you're seeing is because you're mundane and it's nothing and it's insignificant. Just keep on watering. Keep on watering that plan that God gave you. Come on, I feel that the Holy Ghost right now. Keep on watering that dream that God has placed in your hands and in your heart. Keep on, keep on evangelizing if you're a pastor, if you're a church planter. Keep on teaching Bible studies. Keep on planning that business. Keep on marketing if you're an entrepreneur. Keep on working on the books. Keep on working on your finances if you're working on getting out of debt. Just keep on doing what God has put in your heart. You might see little results here and there, but that's a sign that there is life, not a sign that you're not moving fast enough or your life is mundane. But then after watering or planting and after watering, guess what's next? Harvest time. And harvest time, I know, see, during the, during the planting and during the watering, we are dreaming about harvest, right? We're saying, man, when harvest comes, I'm going to be excited. I'm going to sit back and just harvest, you know, what I've been planting. And, and finally, I made it. But that's not the truth. When much is given, much is required. Harvest time actually means more consistency and more work. Because in harvest time, that's when you really had to make sure you have structure and infrastructure in place so you can handle the blessing. And that's why a lot of times when we're going through our process of planting and watering, the Lord encourages us to wait on, upon him. And he will renew our strength because while you're working on the assignment and the dream that God has given you, guess what? God is working on you. Because when that, when that time comes, when you're harvesting, when you're seeing the vision manifest, because God has been working on you throughout those seasons or time periods, now you're ready to handle the responsibility of harvest. You see what I'm saying? This is the word of the Lord told you this is God's word is not is that philosophy this is Bible so Galatians again says don't get weary in your planting and in your watering don't get weary in, in, in doing good do good do what's right 
do what God called you to do. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest. If, if, if we do not give up. Don't give up. Colossians 3.23 says this. Whatever you do, watch this. Keep this in your mind. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters or human beings. So whatever you do, you're doing it unto the Lord. You're not doing it for people, but you're doing it unto him. If you got a, if you're getting a, um, uh, what's it called? A promotion that I work this year. You're, you're stepping into a new promotion. Work at it with all your heart. If you're, if you're stepping into a new ministry at church, work at it with all of your heart as if you're working for the Lord, because you are working for the Lord in both secular and at church, believe it or not. We don't leave the Lord in the secular field and then go back to God on Sundays. No, we walk by faith now. We live by faith. We are always in the kingdom of God. We're always aware of Jesus Christ, right? So whatever you do, do it unto the Lord and not for human people. So as we step into 2024, let's make consistency our guiding principle. This is what the Lord has placed in my heart. Embrace the lessons from the industries that we see from Jesus and from the scriptures. Consistency is the key that unlocks the door to our dreams, to God's purpose in our lives, to our assignments. Remember, great things are not achieved overnight. There is planting, there is watering, and there is harvest. But through steadfast commitment and persistent effort, we will achieve greatness. So be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Worship him, love him, and be consistent and persistent in the things that God has put in your hands going into this next year, and you will be a good steward of what God has for you. All right? So this is the word of the Lord tonight or today, whatever you're watching it, this morning, this afternoon, or tonight, right? But um, God bless you so much. I pray that, that you're encouraged. I pray that this made sense. And I pray that, that you will be successful. Listen, leave a comment. If you're working on something, leave a comment in the chat. Um, let us know what you're working on. We're praying for you as usual. Um, give me your comments, what was said um, today. And you know, tell us your thoughts. If you have anything to add to that, we want to hear from you. Also, share this broadcast with anyone that you know who's moving forward. This broadcast today is not for people who are doing, who are not doing anything. These are for people who have something to work on and they must get done. I'm telling you to be consistent. Share it to them. All right. And subscribe to our YouTube channel so we can really activate this algorithm and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right. God bless. I love everyone. I love everyone. In Jesus' name, again, comment, comment on this.